to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Thank you for understanding. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Sing it one more time. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O Lord, but thou, O Lord, art a shield. I don't know if they were honored and recognized, but please let's celebrate Reverend Obandoma and his dear wife. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I announced it yesterday, but we'll still honor them again, Reverend Daniels and his dear wife, all the way from Enugu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, Mukhtar is here. Happy. Where is your wife? Wife, where are you? Wave your hands. Look at tiny hands with a ring on it. Praise the Lord. Jimmy has shared the goal, really, this whole session is an attempt to not only inspire us. Oh, by the way, please let's celebrate those outside. Please let's celebrate those outside. There is a huge sacrifice. There are people seated everywhere. And in the sun, it is extremely inconveniencing. Um, but like we always teach, there is no sacrifice. Um, pay the price now, so you can pay any price tomorrow. There is a central price to pay now. Then you will be able to pay any price tomorrow. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to, just a few things really. Ejimi has, I mean, when I sat down and I listened to him, I said, this is more than enough to jumpstart anyone's life. You must always know the strategy God has allocated for a generation to prosper or for a generation to know Him. There is a pathway. Your assignment is to find out what method are you using in this season. And some of the things that He shared here, are, they are not opinions. Please understand this. It is, it is very, very powerful that you know this. The journey to wealth, and, and, and let me start. The journey to wealth is not just a journey to get money. It's a journey to redeem time. I want to start by talking a bit about time. Because if we do not understand the value of time, sorry I may be writing, you may not see it, but no problem. Time. This is a very, very mysterious concept. Time. That the only thing that God gives you is time. And that whatever you make out of that time, destiny is what you do with time. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says to redeem the time because the days are evil. One of the most effective ways to redeem the time is to be prosperous. 
when you prosper is a very powerful strategy to redeem time the standard the standard um, challenge of failures and those who are weak and poor is that they never have access to their time no matter what you have if you lose time you don't have anything a dying man's request is not more money it's not more ideas it's not more education a dying man's request is more time because the moment you have time whatever it is that you desire can come take away a man's time and pour a pile of dollars on him it makes no sense a man that dies is a man who does not have any earthly time again. The price and the size of the clothes and the coffin, notwithstanding. So all that we have been sharing here, listen to me, is so that by the grace of God, I hope you know that it's a cost to spend your entire lifetime seeking money. It's a cost. It was never designed that way. The time that God gave us, there was an assignment connected to it. Are we together? And that you must know the principles that will help you to gain time. Wealth can gain time because you can outsource other people's time. You can have more than 24 hours when you are wealthy. You have to understand this. Because like Ejimi was sharing, there are many people who think this is just about, you know, having money and, you know, it's, it's wonderful. But let me tell you this, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than just a desire to do well. This is what you seek to redeem. Time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. Are we together? It takes time to build anything that works. This, this, the things you are hearing, just like he told you. Most of the people that will share this will never share this free of charge. Impossible. People have invested millions and millions to learn. But you cannot give it free when you are hungry. You know, everybody is really a giver. It's just that there is a level of commitment of your time that will not allow you to freely release. If Joseph's brothers met him in Potiphar's house, he will not forgive them. Forgiveness is easy when you are blessed. That's why you hardly find wealthy people offended and these things are unnecessary. Time. It takes time to build a good home. It takes time to be an effective minister of the gospel. You don't sit down. You ask any preacher you know. You don't sit down and just prepare a spirit-inspired sermon in one or two hours. Aside from the inspiration of the Almighty, you need to study. It takes time. It takes time to teach your children the way of the Lord. It takes time to build relationships. Remember, we spoke a bit about it. You want to transit from relationships as a connection to an investment. It takes time. When you take a flight to Lagos, you simply created a system of redeeming time. That whereas it would have taken you 12 hours or 13, hoping that nothing happened on the way. Are we together? If the car breaks down, why are you angry? Because something is happening to your time. Please listen. You have to get this. The whole fight is for this. Time. 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 There is no time in the grave. It takes time to live a life that is effective. Many people cannot afford certain things because of this. Time. What this phone does is it helps you redeem time. Whereas I would have written a letter and it would have taken two weeks to get to the U.S. 
with one dial in two minutes. Why do fast foods make a lot of money? They have found a way of redeeming time. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very, very important. Why is a typewriter obsolete? Because it did not sustain the ability to help men redeem time. So the journey to wealth, among many other things, was primarily designed to give you the environment and the atmosphere where time is of an advantage. I shared with you, the devil has a strategy. If you have wealth and have time, you have cheated life. And so you are at liberty to choose one. Time without wealth or wealth without time. What we are teaching you here, brothers and sisters, is more than abundance. You don't need this seminar to have some level of abundance. Some people can have a good job, maybe in an oil company, and have a cash flow that is reasonable, but they are not free. Financial freedom, you see that definition that Jimmy gave you, is important. The ability to have sufficient financial resources alongside the time, the energy, the peace of mind to be blessed by it. It takes time to live an impactful life. Are we together? Imagine that as we are teaching right now, simply because of the financial constraints, we begin to move around with a bowl all around and say, look, if you don't want the diesel to the gen to off, or if you don't want us to be hungry tonight, please come around. It is powerful to get to a realm where you no longer think about money. You have to believe it exists. We have so factored it that we believe that until you think, oh, where will I get this? Where will this come from? That you get to a point where your only restraint is contentment and the voice of the Holy Spirit, not lack. There is such a place. It may spend about an hour or so building your mind to believe. Because do you know for many people, and this has nothing to do with region. You hear people say, oh, this region like money. It's not true. Money is very necessary. Money is not everything. But in the area that only money can serve, nothing will replace it. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. No prayer could bring it down. No fasting could bring it down. No warfare could bring it down. It took prosperity to bring the world down to get to the grave. Joseph of Arimathea. When you are not blessed, there are many things that will go wrong in your life. Young people now have high blood pressure. 21, 22, 23. And they have BP. It's unnecessary. I've prayed to God and there is a goal and there is an architecture that God is helping us to build in this ministry to get to a point where everybody is more than blessed. As blessed as a nation, as an individual. So that you can have the time to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Are we together now? Many of you have good intentions. When you see the work of the Lord, you want to be part of it. But you are constrained. Many fights and quarrels. Do you know the top three reasons why marriages fail? I've taught it here in this house. Reason number one is finance. Reason number one, not demons, finance. And so I, I, I want you to have a healthy respect. Now I know that there are people who have taught about finances and all they've done is just stimulating an obsession for acquisition of material things. Material things without a vision is a burden. It truly is a burden. Because any material thing you accumulate, there will have to be a system of maintenance. And sometimes it will be better off not having it. Are we blessed? I want to share with you what I will call the pathway to wealth. Just to buttress on what Ejimi has said. Many of the things that he said, I will just be repeating it. Like a guide, like a blueprint that can help you. 
I taught the law of honor yesterday, and it is my sincere prayer that God will help us to respect people that have results. Our generation is a very arrogant generation that does not respect results. I never disregard a person and a people that I see results in. I've had the privilege to meet extremely wealthy people. And when I sit there, I sit quietly. No matter what they say, whether I agree with it or not, I must honor them because they have results that I don't have some of it. Praise the Lord. So it is important to listen. It's important to understand. Another reason, let me quickly say, why we are teaching this is because we want to trust God to break this curse in Africa where people only prosper when they are old. In Africa, we don't do things fast. Speed is something that is not associated with Africans. If you buy a car and build a house, build an organization, build a successful ministry, say in your 20s, people look at you and say it's not correct. Are we together? The moment they see a young man or young people doing extremely productive things, an agitation begins to arise. Why should you have this car? How old are you? I'm 21. You must be a scammer. You must be a... No, 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 no. But when you are 65 and you are struggling to build a house, they say, no problem, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. But the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance, not for his children. You are a failure if all you have is for your children. According to scripture, it must be transgenerational. Something that can last your children's children. Are we together now? Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Listen carefully. That delighted greatly in his commands. He says his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. I will not spend my life chasing money. It's a cause. The price of my life, like a Jimmy shared, I was so blessed, is the blood of Jesus Christ. And I will not reduce myself to become a slave to mammon. Notice Jesus said something. He says you cannot serve two masters. So mammon is a master. He never said God and Satan. The only way to serve God comfortably is for one of the masters to become your slave. Because two of them are masters. And when you serve one, the other master will fight you. In ancient times, two kings cannot submit in another place. You have to behead one king and take the head into a city. And then you gain territory. You cannot allow money like that. And then you are serving God and money is there as a master. Like Cain and Abel, there will be a contention. And so when you conquer financial resources... The limitations that come with this system. Then you will have the time to serve God. By now I'm sure you have seen and you are learning again. That there is a system for wealth and abundance. This is what I want you to know. It is not one day, one day go better. Is if God wants to bless me, he will bless me. Those statements are very demonic. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So there is a system... Um, get my teaching financial dominion the wealthy place we have done all these preliminaries the things that have to do with you know tithe surrender your heart and all of that i won't go into it i want to focus on on the, the natural laws i think that's where the body of christ has a serious problem i've shared with you here that both spiritual laws and the natural or physical laws of wealth and abundance are all kingdom laws. You are not at liberty to choose one and leave the other. Don't forget the revelation that Ejimi shared. Because sometimes we men of God, we must take some responsibility. That, that Levitical advantage that was given to us. After this meeting now, someone can come with an envelope and say, Apostle, you bless me. Take 
But someone may not easily meet you like that. Are we together now? So there must be a strategy. It's the reason why many people are becoming preachers. Because they found out that the theology we sell makes only preachers to prosper. So if you are a non-preacher, that privilege is not given to you. Don't forget that a preacher already has access to people who can see and appreciate his value. The work has been done. And so they can honor and they can appreciate you. Every one of us can, should, and must prosper. If you don't prosper, let me be a bit harsh, forgive me. You are wicked. Poverty is wickedness. I'm being harsh deliberately. It's not an insult. I hate poverty for one reason. Because of what it does to the kingdom. If poverty did not affect the kingdom, I would not have any problem with it. All of these things. I've had the privilege to be with people at hospitals. And I've had the privilege to see people dying daily of sicknesses. Are we together now? Some parents or people even request and say, just leave me to die. Because the amount of money that will be needed to save my life is unnecessary. The grave is full of many people who had gone before their time. Money killed them. So please make up your mind that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will get this thing once and for all. If you could get salvation, if you could get education, then you can get this finance. Ejimi was just teaching the basics to help you begin to jumpstart your life. But the assignment is more than just giving you cash flow. It's to give you stability. 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 Are we together now? It is very, very important. The laws, the physical laws, and then the physical laws of wealth and abundance, and then I'll tie it to a few principles on the pathway to wealth. There are three of them that I want to teach you. Number one, the law of value. Number one, the law of value. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, that the gift of a man makes room for him and brings him before great people. I've, I've given this illustration again and again. Let, let me use it again. Please come, Sam. If you put just in front, just come. Just come stand at my back. Everybody, please watch. Just stand facing the crowd. Compress yourselves together. Look at this. This is life and this is destiny. There is no space for you there. To believe that there is a space waiting for you is just an emotional way of encouraging you. It's a motivation. But the rude truth is that there is no space for you in life. This is the table of greatness. There is no vacancy and no vacuum for you. This is what the Bible says. The gift of a man will make room. Make room. There was no space for you. But God gave you something. That created space. There was no space for Facebook on earth. There was no space for Twitter. There was no space for anything. They created space. They pushed time and added themselves. And the key is being valuable. Please write this. Thank you. Thank you guys. Value is a measure of your usefulness. Value is a measure of your usefulness to a person to a territory to a civilization value is a measure of your usefulness value is also a measure of your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful not just solutions value is your ability to provide solutions please write that are needed and useful you can provide solutions 
That's what HB was trying to teach. That you have to find out whether there is a demand for it. Are we together? Look up, please. So when we say you are valuable, it's an attempt to gauge the degree of your usefulness and the, the, the degree to which you can be desirable as far as the context of a civilization is concerned. If I say a Jimmy is valuable, listen, if I say Pastor Alpha is valuable, Sam is valuable, what I'm trying to say is that I have perceived their usability, their usefulness, as far as our civilization is concerned. Are we together now? Whoever, someone who sells pampas, for instance, that's a valuable person. But with respect to me and my money and my patronage, that value is useful, but it's not needed. I don't have anything to do with him. So if I'm the only person on earth, that person is valuable, but you will still be poor. Are we together now? Remember, I taught it here that there is a law. In business, we call it the law of compensation. And I'll state it for you. You know it, learn it. That our rewards in life will always be in exact ratio to three things. Number one, the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do what you do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. When you are easily replaceable by any standard, your value is low. Are we together now? So it is very, very important to understand your value will make room for you. Let me tell you this. The greatest value you will ever have is within you, not outside you. Thank God for real estate. Thank God for every other thing. But if every value, I don't trust anything outside me. The safest things are within me. Government can fight with you and collect your land and bully you and collect your land. Your shirt can tear. Your machine can spoil. But the thing that is in you has come to stay. It is true. The most successful people are people who draw from within and create their possibilities without. It's important. So you must identify, write it down please. Your inherent abilities. Number two, you must also build skill. I'm just rushing it. Skill is not inherent. It is an outsourced trait. You have to learn it. Your inherent abilities are there, but your skill is something that you have to learn. Identify your potentials. Your inherent abilities. Identify and build and develop skill. Value. There is hope for your finances to the degree to which you are valuable and you recognize the value. If you do not recognize the value, you will never be able to rise. The scripture that Jimmy shared, there was a vessel with oil in it and the woman was saying nothing except... And the oil was hearing her. I am in your house. And every day you continue to pass me. Not knowing that the key to your tears is in that jar. There is this treasure in earthen vessel. God put value and put something in everybody. You must identify it. You must identify it. Value. Every value is spiritual. It is true. Within you from the realm of the spirit. And the goal is to draw it out. The law of value. Everyone please say I am valuable. Listen. If you are born again as a child of God. It is a double advantage. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. Is real value. The Holy Spirit is the advantage. I've taught a little bit on true riches. That there are certain things that have real value in men. It is the capital that buys money. 
wisdom, understanding, the anointing, a transformed mind. This is real value. Are we together now? If you are not valuable or you do not identify the value, then there is no possibility of rising financially. Let me teach you something very quickly. The spiritual laws of wealth are responsible for the arrival of financial resources. The physical laws are responsible for the management and multiplication. The spiritual laws are not responsible for increase. They are responsible for the coming of financial resources. So if all you know are the spiritual laws, resources will keep coming. But you will never be transgenerational. The physical laws are responsible to create the management systems and the increase that comes to you. Are we together? I've taught you here that there is only one way money comes. If you touch your pocket or you check your bank account and you ever see physical money there, only two things brought it. One favor, two value. That's the only way money comes. There is no call. If you ever check and find out that there was no money or there's no money around, favor, value. It is the only official way money arrives. Never forget this. Favor, value. Favor, value. Favor, value. Are we blessed? So the law of value seeks to put in you an understanding that until you know and you are able to identify your potentials, there is no prospect of true wealth. Law number two, the law of productivity. Productivity is different from value. There is no need for productivity when you do not know you have value. But let me tell you this. Please look up. Just because you have identified your potentials, just because you are valuable, in that you are aware that you possess the skill to solve problems, it doesn't mean money will come automatically. Are we together? What is productivity? Productivity is refining your value and turning your value into products and services that are needed and useful. Until your value is refined and then turned into products and services that are needed and useful, you are not yet authorized for a reward. You are authorized for commendation, but not for a reward. So there are many valuable people around, but they cannot be rewarded because they are not productive. Are we together? Is someone learning something this morning? The foundation of your productivity is development. The moment you begin to develop your value, you are transiting from just being valuable to being productive. And the zenith of your productivity is when you have packaged your value into products and services that are needed and useful. I'm wearing a shirt here. This was a gift that was graciously given to me. A gentleman, I was, I was going to minister somewhere and he just made shirts with different things that he believes that I like. Now, I hope you know it's not rocket science to learn how to make shirts like this. But that person who can make shirts will remain poor. The difference between him and the one who did this is productivity. Are we together? Now, let me tell you this. You will still see these principles even in koinonia. I'm being fair and I'm being honest because many preachers don't know why they are prospering. They think they are prospering just because they are serving God. No. No. Your, your products immortalize your impact. You are finite as a person. You cannot be everywhere, but your products give you that sense of omnipresence. As we are standing right now doing this conference, there are thousands and millions of people around the world just knowing about Joshua Selman, listening to messages that are changing their lives. It's called productivity. 
It's not enough to be anointed. It's not enough to teach well. There has to be something that represents you. One of the principles of dominion is that your seed must rule for you to be in dominion. Are we together? So you are not productive if you have not given birth to something that represents you. There must be a representation of you in the market space. Otherwise you will remain poor. Please get this. They are very simple concepts. Many of you are blessed by what this gentleman is playing. And, but the problem is he's blessing you. And yet he's not increasing financially from it. You know why? Because with respect to our teaching, he's valuable. But he's not yet productive. You are productive when you can give something other than you that represents you. So I give myself to you and you can still go with me in my products. I am there with you in your house, although not there physically. If this guy now turns this, develops himself, imagine that he produces this, volume one, soaking worship. Are we together? Or he just writes something, songs from the throne. Volume 1. Now he's productive. Because after listening to him, the next question is, how can I take you along? Do I always have to see you to be blessed by you? Are you seeing that now? And he can tell you there is a product. This is my CD. Now it's true that the value is spiritual, but you will still pay for it. You will still pay for it. You carry that CD and someone else, you are marketing free for him because you will not listen to it alone. The moment you listen to it, you are saving him the labor of having to pay for many people to listen to him again. He's leveraging on your liking what he's doing. And someone says, where did you get this? He said, there's a young man called Elijah. And then like Ejimi shared, immediately in our digital age, the person will go online. Many of you are deceived by the fact that I'm not online. I'm not online, but I'm online. You see, you have to know this. I may not be online as a person, but everything I would have done as a person is represented online. So don't sit down and fool yourself and, and stop yourself from establishing a presence that the world will know. This is very important. I have to be very fair and honest to you. Because I don't want you to just remain down. I remember one hotel that I went to. It was a new hotel. I was just trying it out. And then, when I went there, I was happy because I believed nobody, you know, nobody you know, would know me. I would have my time and have my space. And then I got in there and the day I was going to check out and leave, as soon as I came out, the receptionist was on her knees. She said, Apostle, sir. I said, hey this thing now what is all this one when she saw maybe the people who were coming to see me and people were talking immediately she went online and when she went online she tried to check the photo google images and said, ah he's the one who you see that if i type your name or your value what face comes out the face that comes out is the face that will get my money and if that face is not you, you will not get it. Are we together? This is very powerful. It's not enough to be valuable. You must be productive. And the internet has granted so much opportunities. Grace, come. Stand up. You see this lady? Many of you are just seeing... Some of you know her. She was from the school of ministry. This lady you see export agricultural products from Joss down to Lagos and all of that. My smoothies are made from her agricultural products. This lady you are seeing is a very powerful lady as she's standing like this. She has her farm. She packages her strawberry, her mulberry. She started by working in a coffee shop for some people who were oppressing her and making life miserable. When you are in Laban's house, you will never be rewarded adequately. God is a God of portions. You start in Laban's house, but he must give you your portion. 
anybody that seeks to keep you depending on him for life is not blessing you. It is why evil people prosper. It's why Jews prosper. Because when you are working with them, you know you are an apprentice. The goal is never to remain under subjugation financially. The system that keeps you depending on someone else's creativity and all of this for your daily bread is not the worst, but it's not the best either. You can start there, but the goal is that you will have your own portion. I just, I'm using this example. She came in from Joss yesterday. Yesterday, right? I knew she was around by what happened in my house. When I saw a carton of strawberries and all kinds of berries, I said, that's it. Hey, Jimmy just taught you now. You eat meat all your life, you eat your time and eat your life into the grave. Eating excessive meat is not enjoyment. It's a way of dying fast. Praise the Lord. This is the lady. Do you know she's not the person with the greatest farm in Jaws? I'm just giving you an instance. This lady. Every time I think of health and nutrition, I must think of her. Are we together now? Now, if, if I offend this lady, it's only a matter of days. I will remember what I stand to miss. Because I cannot farm and I cannot do it, I will broker reconciliation fast. Are you getting what I'm saying now? She's productive. She's productive. She's productive. Many of you are saying, ah, that's my idea. That's it. You remain valuable. But this is productivity. Praise. Are you here? Praise from Joss. Did she come? Your sister? She's coming. Come. Okay, you come and stand for her. Run, 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 run and come. Quickly, run. Let me tell you a little story. I'm inspiring you. We are going to pray. You see this lady? We had a session for our children um, on Sunday. Powerful. And she runs something called Creative Kids. Very, very powerful platform that they have for children. Mentoring children and blessing them. Many of you have passion for children. I saw some of your faces on Facebook there. But nobody has rewarded you because it has remained just at value. Now, her younger sister, this is, this is where I want, her younger sister came to Zaria with a health product for all kinds of things, detoxification and all of that. Because she's just known that, look, when you make money, the next thing is to stay healthy. So she wisely will just look for people around. And she came with a product. And then she met me and gave me the product in a jerrican. She said, this is for your health. You're a man of God. You're a preacher. This would help you. And I said, oh, interesting. I've studied a little on wellness and all of that. And when I took it, I was so blessed. When I got to Joss, I looked for that lady and I said, carry two and take to my parents. It's better than going to the hospital. Take it quickly and go and give my parents. Because the Bible says, he who does not work should not eat. It's a health advice. If you know you are not going to work fast for your health. And now my parents are retired and they are eating. So I said, please, quickly, <laughs> take this health product and go and give them. And when they gave them, my mom was so blessed, she was so impressed I, this lady, her sister, when um, that was last month or so, I told her that I want all of this because I want to be taking it myself. She left just that morning and came to come and give me just, um, I think about four gallons of it. Beautifully packaged. Praise, praise what? Praise therapy. Praise therapy. Praise juice therapy. Are we together now? Let me tell you. It may not automatically make her a millionaire. But she will never sleep hungry. There is no spirit that will rise up. And stop her from eating. Are we together? I'm just giving you an example. Of people scattered among us here. 
Let me surprise you. Emeka, stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this guy? His company are the people that handle my designs in Lagos. I have a number of tailors. I have a number of tailors. I have four tailors in all. Most of the clothes that you see me wear, with the exception of a few, is his business that does it. Let me tell you the story of this gentleman. This gentleman was struggling and things were not going on well. And he listened to what message? Financial dominion. And when I spoke about value, he made up his mind to just pack up this for a while and reinvented himself, developed himself, and then he sold something that he knew I would not resist. He traveled from Lagos, brought it here to Zaria. When I started out in ministry, my tailors were in Zaria. I love them, but oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Imagine, I'm not, please don't feel bad if you are here and you are my tailor. I love you and God, God will bless you. But I'm challenging you. Now listen very carefully. They remained my tailors until. Now notice, he was not the first to give me clothes. There were many other people. They were valuable but not productive. There was no way of seeing them again. They would give me beautiful clothes. And I said, where is it? There's no way of reaching you. I want to order your clothes. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Not everyone is constrained with cost. There are people who have the liberty. And he came here. When he came, I prayed for him. You know, people give me all kinds of gifts and I'm grateful. And then in the night, hi, when God is on your side, Ba, he's on your side. I was sleeping at around one or two. True story. And the Holy Spirit told me, get up and try those clothes. <sighs> By this time, I now got up and I looked at it. I said, all these tailors that just sew this, a cloth, you don't know whether it's v-neck or round neck. You know, it's a and so on and so forth and then i took his cloth when i wore it uh, i said this this is calling me this is a language that is calling me i asked that they should look for him and bring him to my house the next day hmm. the king sent for joseph and they brought him there are there are times i want to tell you a few things because this gentleman now sues for top politicians in this country one opportunity open doors i don't know how many millions he makes in a month just because he left lagos and came for this conference a wise person because no matter how far you have gone don't settle there the grace that lifts you is also the grace that keeps you are you learning something here please when he did that, just a few adjustments and I told him, all right. And I tried to bless this gentleman. He refused. We were fighting. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm a giver. I'm also into your life. When he left, I said, this guy is so wise. And his life just changed. Completely. That's him today. I can point people here, but I'm just doing this deliberately to encourage you. Apostle, I am valuable. Thank you, but you will remain poor. You will only remain regarded not rewarded. Are we together? It's very, very important. Please sit down. The law of productivity. 80 to 90 percent of the ministrations that I go for and the people that meet me do not know me as a person, but there is a product, the teaching. I remember those days. It was not popular at all to put messages on the internet. I remember the Holy Spirit told me. He said, don't sell the messages. Put them online and I will take it to the nations. And you cannot imagine what God has done with these teachings. You are not productive until your product or your service proves you are. You may be valuable but you must have a product. You may not have a physical office, but you can have an online presence. Do you have a physical office? 
Please stand up, darling. Do you have a physical office? She doesn't. But boy, you need to see what this lady is doing. You can see me marketing and somebody is now thinking, I say, ah, I'll be your Zaria distributor. I'll send, send everything here. Please sit down. The amount of chairs and canopies that we spend every week in Koinonia here. Last year, when the finance department prepared the end of year finance, and I saw how much just one department spent, I got angry. I said, Lord, why should this money go out like that? By Friday, over 80% of the hotels in this city are completely shut because of what is happening. Not to talk of miracle services. And there are many valuable people seated here. Right now, throughout this retreat, there are some of you here that are food vendors. You are the ones feeding people when they fast. Productivity. 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 There are things you are passionate about that may not bring you reward. Leave them first. Follow what gives you reward. Then use your passion for philanthropy when you are rich. You don't bless the poor by being one of them. Are we together? When I learned this, I saw the reason why many gifted people, many gifted people were not rewarded. I kept challenging the worship team. And I told them, I said, guys, let me tell you sincerely, and I submit to you, by the privilege of God's grace, we have some of the finest worshippers in this nation in this place. It's true. It's true. You go around the body of Christ and you hear their worship songs. So many people have listened to their songs from Koinonia messages. But over 80% of them do not have a product. Imagine that they had something now that in this conference we can say this is available. After the grace, you go to the back. Here is so 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 person CD. Are you seeing now? Millions of naira locked up in the realm of the spirit. The womb that will deliver that baby is called productivity. Praise the Lord. This is very important. I remember when several people started calling and saying, um, Apostle, we want to send seeds from abroad. People want to send seeds and we didn't have a domicile. And it was something that could be easily done. I don't know how I got that careless that we could not. I mean, it, it didn't take more than 24 hours to just have domiciliary accounts. And for a, a while, those people will go through the rigor of looking for exchangers in Nigeria that they may pay into their account and then all of And that rigor, one day, let me tell you what happened, what challenged us. You can see that there are people God are destined to bless us. But are not being productive by going a step further to have dollar and pound and euro accounts short change prophecy. The oil stops flowing when there is no vessel. You have to make space for it. What happened was the manager of GT Bank Somebody just got up like that and did a transfer. And they didn't know where to put it. The person just was and said, make sure it reaches Koinonia. I got a text from the manager. Was I think we went to minister somewhere. And he said, sir, this is it. We don't know where to put this money now. I said, open an account for us. Open domiciliary, pounds, door, everything. Open it. The moment that account was opened, me, myself, I became afraid. I said, my God... So this is what everybody has been waiting for. The day that that account was launched here, it was like a charm. You see, I'm being open to share these things with you. Imagine how many blessings are locked up just waiting for productivity. You think they don't like your song till the day the world hears it. Everybody say, I receive grace to be productive. Say, I receive grace. Don't go online when you are not ready. Now that I'm talking, some of you are ready to put nonsense online this night. 
don't disgrace yourself. The world does not have that level of patience to tolerate mediocrity. So make sure that if you are going to do something, you know what you are doing. Quality and content. Word based and that it is worth lifting and blessing. Don't sit down with nothing. There is always something you can do. There are some of you here, by the grace of God and in the name of the Lord, with what God is doing in your life now, tomorrow, nobody will even talk, feeding hungry people, you will, you will build the equivalent of hotels, but just for the gospel, and say, this one is for the gospel. I heard about a gentleman who died in the mission field one time. I, it pained me. I said, how much did it take to preserve this gentleman's life? Is the gospel a cause? Why should a man go and die because of a trivial something? Let me tell you this. What we are telling you is the future. It's not today. Those who have eyes to see can prepare for the future. Those who don't have eyes will be the victims of it. A day is coming. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. You're excelling in life financially. May no longer depend so much on jobs again, but on your productivity. Computers and artificial intelligence has come to stay. It is not going anywhere. And like Ejimi shared, every entrepreneur is out to cut costs. That means cutting any head that stands on the way of that cost. If 50 people receive 200,000 and one software managed by one man who can receive 1 million will solve the problem. I love you, but you are going. Simple. I remember when this down on me seriously. My blessed sister, I love her so much. She was working in one of the telecoms. And it wasn't like it was the best of conditions. Wonderful, very sincere, loving lady. And they just said they were downsizing. And with all my anointing, with all the grace, fellowship of the Holy Ghost, this is how they just pushed my sister out of the way. That thing pained me and I said, no, this is it. One day, you see, sometimes God wakes you up by just letting you, he can let life teach you a lesson that you will stand up and say, this is it. This, it will not repeat itself again. When I saw that thing, my heart broke. I said, how many people are on their way? Imagine that a husband and wife are in the same place and they love God. And they have three or four or five children. And suddenly both of them are downsized. In one day, their whole lives return to shambles. But there are people rising. That will feed kings. Because even the king is fed from the field. So no one is immune. When you have value, kings must eat from you. It says that Gentiles come to your light. Yes. I studied Billy Graham a lot because he was not the only evangelist on earth. But what gave him access to kings? Every president, regardless of your spiritual conviction, must honor Billy Graham. And I said, Lord, grant me the grace, not just to minister the word, but to speak to kings. You want to speak to kings, you must learn the protocol of kings. Are we together? Let me surprise you. Daddy, sir, please don't be offended. Would you rise, sir? Yes. Let's celebrate our father. Now, this, our father here, is the national coordinator of CEM. Am I right, sir? That man. This man decided to make up his mind, take his reputation, keep it aside, and come for the school of ministry. And dedicate six months. The national coordinator of CEM. I'm ready to invent my life. I'm, I'm showing you people who are defying these things. To say, at my age nobody taught me. But even now, oh Abraham, even now, there can still be a way out. Are we together? I can point people again and again. Who have already seen the future. And have known that if I do not own the future by subscribing to what God is doing. Then I may have to sell my children. In the Bible, the track record of eating children and destroying their destinies has always been there. Two women, they ate one child. 
they were about to eat another child. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. Very, very important. Everybody say productivity. Let me give us the last key. Thank you for your patience. The law of exchange. Please sit down, sir. The law of exchange. So I've taught you the law of value. Identifying your usefulness, your gifts, your skill. Number two, productivity. Developing and refining those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful. And then the law of exchange. In business, we call it the art of selling. The ability to compel people to need you. The ability to persuade the attention and the resources of people. The law of exchange. You see, it is at the point of exchange, that transaction, that resources come to you. So come, Sam. Sam is valuable. Bring, bring your notebook. Sam is valuable. Sam is productive. He has a product, but he's still poor. This is Sam's money with me. God has already told him, I've released your wealth, and the wealth is on earth. The law of value has been kept. The law of productivity has been honored. But the law of exchange is why he's still poor, although productive. Are we together now? He must know how to reach me so that I will collect his product in exchange for this. This was the law that brought Jesus to the earth. It was not enough for the father to intend. It was not enough for the son to be willing. There had to be a system of conversion where the word became flesh. And then when that happened, even at Gethsemane, there had to be a system of exchange so that he would become the cause, the second Adam. He was not born the cause. An exchange made that happen. Listen to me. If you violate this law, you will remain shockingly poor. You don't have to sell to exchange. You just have to get the people. When I say sell, I mean that you don't have to put a price. Otherwise, people like us, who don't sell anything, for instance, you understand? I cannot come for a meeting and then I tell you, you must give me one million. You must give me 500,000. In that regard, I am not selling, but I am selling. You see that now? It is very true. I will be a wicked person to not teach you this. Because that is the final system of arrival of the resources. It is at the point of exchange that the millionaires are made. It is at the point of exchange that the resources reach you. Many of us have taken it a step further to be productive. But you have not been able to get those who need it to come for it. And it is until they come to your light that they come with their gift. It was when the queen of Sheba heard about what Solomon was doing. Then she came with gifts. Solomon didn't sell anything but he sold something. He sold excellence. Are we together? The same thing that I teach today as a man of God. That sometimes I taught years ago. And then while I'm struggling to get a bike. The people that invited me will come and stand close to me like a bride. And just bring out 1,000 and say, sorry sir, I hope we were really blessed. As if you are bribing somebody in a federal government job. The same thing I'm teaching today. And someone can bring what is the dream of someone else. And bring it. Why? Because of the law of exchange. When God was telling me to put these messages online. And let it go free. It looked like God, what are you saying? It was not about it. He was saying, I want the ears of those who need this anointing. I want the ears of the generation that needs to hear you, to hear you. 
until this thing works, hear ye him. Hear ye him. Patronize ye her. That is when wealth begins to come. Where's case strings? It's not here. He didn't come this morning. K strings was anointed. Great guy. Productive. But one person, Nathaniel Bassi, got to hear his song and called him and said he should come. And God has helped that young boy now. Many of these people you see seated right now have their various albums and all of that in, in process now. Very soon it will come out. And before you know it, you may not even be seeing them on Friday again. Ah, where is this one? This one is in Brazil. And he say, I know them. No, 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 no. Are we together? Until your world knows you are there and they know why you are there, it is an error for them to come to you. What for? They have to know you are there and they have to know why you are there. By the grace of God, many people continue to come here because by His Spirit, He has given us the grace to brand our impact. We are not only impactful, the impact has been branded. The name Koinonia is not a revelation, it's a brand. It's a brand. Hmm. It's a brand. When you mention Apostle Joshua Selman, you don't think relationship and marriage. No. I know a lot about finance, but you don't even think finance. You brand your impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The art of selling. You don't always persuade men by talking to them. You persuade men by talking to their needs, talking to their hearts, talking to their hunger. There are times they don't want to hear, but their needs will answer for you and say, don't mind him, we are here, we need you. How can you ever be poor and lack when you rise to a point where you are so needed, you are so useful? Do you know how many people will be blessed when you learn this? I've given you my story that people go to our family house looking for my mother and say, wow, this is Apostle's mom. Mommy, we brought this for you. Thank you for giving birth to this son. I believe my mother's assignment was to give birth to me. Who will be proud that you came? I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, I say it with all humility and I say it in the name of the Lord. Part of the reasons why we are effective in the pursuit of the things of God is because by His grace, He has given a measure of rest in the pursuit of this mammon. You will never serve God chasing money. I don't go to minister today because I'm looking for money from the place. Otherwise, I will choose where to go to and reject other places. There are campuses that will invite you. They barely even have the money for your flight. But you know that souls need to be saved there. But if money becomes your governor, it will lead you outside the will of God. There are people like Ejimi Shed who have no business getting married to certain unbelievers. But the reality of the needs will compel them to say, no problem, we will manage. And their spiritual lives go down. The law of value the law of productivity then the law of exchange and God has put the internet as a blessing to make that happen in one day one day God has given us a measure of influence to assist us this lady now that I've spoken to you think it's a joke everywhere you hear this message around the world you will hear her that's it one word. It doesn't take so much to endorse you. But favor is when preparedness meets opportunity. Opportunity. It's not very difficult for God to lift you. It is not very difficult for God to announce you. We're in a season where God is announcing people and blessing people and helping people and honoring people. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you pay attention to the things that have been taught this morning, they may look like basics, but they are keys that anybody can pick right where you are. 
you can tell yourself, Lord, right where I am. I've seen poverty and struggle. I've seen divorce in my family because of this. And my life cannot continue like this. When you make up your mind like the prodigal son, I will arise. It's within your power. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day, in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. I may not have the time to talk about the other things, but I think this is good. This is good enough for us to pray. Every one of us here needs to engage one or more of these laws. And you will wave poverty goodbye and it will wave you back and say go. Sitting down to superstitiously wait for a breakthrough is deception. You will sit there forever and your children will join you again and again. Whether you are a preacher whether you had the privilege to be educated or not, there is an opportunity for your rising. That from these ashes, from all of this that you are doing, you can arise. Some of you are yet to discover that value. You are not praying in tongues for nothing. The Holy Spirit is not a cause. It's not just something that came to make you a Pentecostal. The Holy Spirit is the advantage that treasure that is in earthen vessel put by God to turn your life around. To turn everything around. To turn your ministry around. Listen, men may laugh at you. Men may be sarcastic, but it's only for a while. You can't laugh at results for too long. Your foolishness will become obvious. It's a retreat, but we also need to be empowered. Oh God, when will you help me? The day you engage this. The day you bring something in my hands. For as long as there was five loaves and two fish, it was alright to feed 5,000 people. The multiplication is always possible when you bring something. He didn't bring flour and, and uh, raw fish. No, the young lad had processed flour, bread, and fish that was already roasted. So it was easy to bless it. If you bring raw fish, God will teach you how to cook it. He won't call anybody to buy it. But when you present it, you can stand and say, My world, come and see like a trophy what His Majesty has done upon my life. You are a man of God here. Let me tell you, ministry is not the reason to be poor. And it doesn't have to be by manipulation and all of that. You can stay with the Spirit. While you are praying, you are increasing in wealth. You are not praying in tongues just so that your capacity is open. While you are studying, when others are sleeping and you are studying, you are making, this is, remember your children. When you are tired, you remember. I, my father could not make this sacrifice, but I'm making this sacrifice for the sake of my children and my children's children. And while you are praying, Shakatos Kabaratos Yata, the anointing of the Spirit is rising. Until the day, you see, you are valuable. Now you have become productive. You have something real. Then God will create the platform. He will put all your destiny helpers in front of you and give you the mic and say, it's your season of appearance. One sermon and what God will do in that meeting, you will never have rest again. Let us begin to come from all over the world. Listen, let me tell you this. By the grace of God, when you have worked on yourself and you can say in all fairness that what I have will not bring me shame. Don't be afraid of letting the world know you are there. 
it is not it is not pride to let the world know you are there jesus said let's go to other cities they need to know that i came the son of god today by god's grace as god has helped us we are not ashamed to tell the world that we respect and we honor but never to the point of intimidation because such as we have there is something god has put is someone ready to pray we are going to spend a few minutes to cry passionately to the God of heaven who is the lifter of men. Prosperity is giving evidence to the blessing. That the blessing is upon your life and you do not frustrate the grace of God. You give evidence. You engage these principles. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the spirit. Outside, pray. You are paying the price outside. But don't be ashamed of your sacrifice. You pray. He bala masata bradi segete bala kadosh. Se na mase bara na ba. Se na na ne mada ba ba. Se la baruza si kata branda kada bala kutiash. He na mada da 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 da. Shala bara da kada bradi gede bala da ba. Hallelujah. Listen. Now unto him who is able to do. So we are not doubting his ability. Don't ever ask God, can you do it? That's not the language of faith. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we ask or think. Listen. According to the power, not that lives, that walks. The fullness of the Godhead lives in you, but it's the dimension that walks that is released to be a blessing. According to the power that walketh in us. Koinonia, let me tell you this. If you listen to this that you are taught today, believe me, it will not take long. You know what to do now. You are not sitting down saying, Lord, what do I do? You know what to do. If you are not valuable, you stay with the Spirit of God. Like Ejimi has shared, you find out, Lord, what is it? What, what, where is that rod in my hand? Wherewith I will do signs and wonders. And God will tell you, there are many things that you have, but one thing is needful. One thing, one thing, that God will anoint. And you go and develop yourself. If it means to take courses and take certifications for the purpose of credibility, do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. It's powerful. Our friend TK is here. TK read chemical engineering, first class chemical engineering. But because of his passion, he went to Lagos Business School to reinvent himself again. Reinvent himself again. Don't say I studied this and that. If you don't need it, relearn. Relearn. Sit down. Go to the internet and relearn. Reschool yourself. You have to learn this. Ejimi was the best student in his, in his class. Industrial design. But he looked at it. I knew from day one that other thing was just to finish it fast. And he had to relearn himself because he, had, he was business all over from head to toe. There are many people who sit down and continue to say, my course is not valuable. Make yourself valuable. There is no such thing as being educated again. You are either learning or you are out. I'm educated is just a philosophical way of encouraging yourself. Reinvent yourself. Stay with the Spirit of God. You are a man of God. Don't be lazy. You are not talking to children. Ministry now is not when you just come and dump anything on people. As you are talking, they are checking your statistics on the internet. As you are talking, they are looking at what you are saying. If you want to teach kings, you must learn. The kings are not poor people. When everybody was coming to Solomon, the queen of Sheba did not come. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness of your rising. Someone lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, 
enough is enough. I challenge myself in this business session. It's time to rest. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, open my eyes to see that with every gift you have given me, which one of them will own the future? Lift your voice and pray. Show me. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will take that which is of me and he will give it to you. He will show you things to come. What may be relevant today may not be relevant in 10 years. Lord, open my eyes. You have given me so many things. Which of them owns the future? So I don't waste my time shadow boxing on things that may never hold relevance. Shabarakatabako selebala Kaprandakatabaru seketebalatosh Enkratabaran suzia hashadabalakata Koinonia, the Lord is lifting your life to make you a praise to the nations. Shiva Shalabo Zazikata, Emprekateke Labarakato Sasyadahasha, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, whatever price I need to pay to be the best, you have to destroy mediocrity. Mediocrity is a terrible spirit. You are neither here nor there. I'd like you to pray. Grace to be exceptional. What have you given me, oh God? The grace to sharpen it. If the axe head be blunt, it says, then much labor, much effort is required. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Grace to be competent. Grace to be productive. Grace to be exceptional. Someone is praying. Someone is praying your way into a realm of strange abundance. There's no space for mediocres in today's world. There is no space for average. A little here, a little there. It will not hold water. Excellence in ministry, excellence in business, excellence in career, excellence in the works of my hands. Oh, I give myself no rest till I become a reference. Challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get to the point of productivity, then you are ready to cry for his assistance. Ah! Because my brothers and my sisters, the next prayer we are about to pray, you see, when God is ready to lift you, he will take you where your helpers are. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. So God will position men 
position people. And then he will now bring you. That's going to be your prayer. Father, the kings of my industry, the gatekeepers, I pray that you will strategically place me in the midst of them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. That he will put you in the midst of the men and women that have both the recognition and the fortitude for reward. I call forth my helpers, the lifters, the announcers, in the name of Jesus. They are positioned around me. They recognize and discern the grace of God upon my life. Hallelujah. Listen. The realm of wealth and greatness, permit me to use the word, is like a secret cult. You have to be ushered by someone who is there. The same way you can't anoint yourself, there must be a hand that holds you and says, come up. Come up. You may be ready, but standing there. Joseph was ready. Pharaoh was there, but the connector was missing. Listen, he told the wine presser, if you get to the king, speak for me. There are times that you don't have a voice at the gate yet. You will need the favor of the person who is already at the gate. It is your works that speak for you at the gate. Sometimes you may not have your voice. Who is already at the gate of my destiny? Lord, grant grace that they speak for me. Grant grace that they endorse what you are doing in my life. Grant grace. May they hear my song. May they hear my sermon. May they see my product. May they see my work as a lecturer. May they see my presentation as a career person. Lord, may they hear about me. Let it be noise abroad that I am here. My destiny, hear me. I am here. Do not bypass me. Hallelujah. The final prayer, two, three minutes and we're done. Listen to me. The last thing you are going to pray for is, Lord, I will prosper even as my soul prospers. That's the rule. The prosperity that God brings is that you prosper even as your soul when Satan comes to cause you to prosper, you will prosper, but your soul will suffer. Because if all we have is just the wealth, the cars, the money, the influence, and all we have ends here, we are all men most miserable. There are people who started loving God well, but because they did not understand that this Babylonian system will give you prosperity and take your soul. Don't confuse what we are teaching here. The Bible says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures. The richer you are, the more you are in love with God. The wealthier you are, the more your heart is with God. That you train your children, no spoiled kids under my roof. Prosperity is not a cost. You will call upon the God of your father. The nation of Israel were instructed to train their children. If they ask you this and that, tell them this is what happened. When you are wealthy and your children go to hell, you fail. You fail woefully. Are we together? Because there is a growing trend that the more people get wealthy, the more they are ashamed of God. 
you will get to certain business fairs. That's why it's good to enter that gate from the gate of value. If you beg your way into that gate, you will live by the terms of those already there. That your heart, you can see millions of dollars, millions of naira, increased influence, ministry everywhere. And you can stand and say, Lord, none of these things will get to my heart. They were given to assist your remaining in my heart. Not to replace you. Ah. Call me na na kane. 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 Yeshua Hamashiach. Call me na na kane. Yeshua. Hamashia, come in anakane. One more time. Hey, come in anakane. Come in anakane. Come in anakane. Come in anakane. Yeshua, Hamashia, come in anakane. Spirit of the living God, we ask you that after this time we have spent, please breathe upon our minds the grace to put this to work. We receive in Jesus' name. We receive the help of God. You are still Ebenezer unto us. And Lord, I pray that by reason of this business seminar, turn people's finances around in very strange ways. And we declare that our hearts, we vow that our hearts will ever remain with you. And that our entire lives will be spent on your purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.